Hoffmanfleet.com. Hey, baseball fans, are you sidelined by chronic joint pain? Swing back into action by joining Orthopedic Associates of Wisconsin at the Brookfield Conference Center on Monday, April 15th from 5 to 7 p.m. for a free community event. Learn about knee replacement surgery from Dr. Mitchell Clement, MD, an orthopedic surgeon at OAW. You can also meet our joint replacement team and get valuable treatment insights. Don't let joint pain keep you out of the lineup. Register now at prohealthcare.org slash class. Hey, this is Jen Latta. You're listening to 94.5 ESPN, WKTI, and WKTI HD Milwaukee. A locally owned Good Karma brand station. It's time for the best 60 minutes of your life. This is the Homer Hour. Broadcasting live from the Gruber Law Office's One Call That's All studio at the Avenue in downtown Milwaukee. Alongside Marquette Hall of Famer and former NBA veteran Tony Smith, here's Emmy Award winner Homer. Best 60 minutes of your day. Thursday means basketball. The Tony Smith Homer Hour. He's kind of on assignment, but I wouldn't let him be on assignment because I said, you are my doctor of basketball injuries, and no one has taught me as much about the calf injury as you. Um, uh, I do want to let you know. Uh, Well, I'm a little worried that if I actually said that because... Uh, I did an interview with uh, Tyler Kolick yesterday as part of the Marquette Banquet, and everything I yep. said, he, he said I was wrong. And, and so, <laughs> your, what did you say? It doesn't matter, but your view of me making it up. You know, when he scored the big basket, he scored the big basket against, against Colorado. You know, it's a mid range, yep. it's right in the middle there, and he floater, and I go, I was convinced that you were going to score and you weren't going to pass. He goes, well, that's not true. Uh, I was looking to pass, and he explained (laughs) everything just like you did, and I said, oh, this is going to be terrible. Tony's going to believe even more strongly that I just make stuff up. But Mm -hmm. other than that, it was special. All right, to more important stuff. Uh, So Giannis goes down. I don't know if you saw it. They were concerned of an Achilles. I said, no, he's walking too well. When people tear their Achilles, it's like they can't even move. But he had a calf injury. And I said, mm-hmm. I got the expert. You told me how bad, and I'm worried if he can be ready for the playoffs. So for those who haven't listened to you, the doctor of basketball injuries, Tony Smith, calf injuries are bad. Am I, I'm not overselling that, right? Uh, you're not overselling that. Now, you know, the, the, the thing about the calf injuries is that we know that, um, you know, they don't seem too bad at first because it hurts initially and you're like, oh, man, I feel it. But it, it gets to a level of, I should say, operational level pretty quickly. And what I mean operational, that, I mean just walking around, being normal, walking around, not necessarily playing basketball. But right. uh, obviously we know they got state-of-the-art treatment around the clock. He's going to be getting that thing treated, worked on. They got everything that you're going to need. Uh, and that's why we've seen Giannis come back from injuries pretty quick. I guess he has that type of body anyway, right? He's going to come and back. And that is, that, you would remember say that is extension? true. Yeah, no, some people are yeah, better oh, yeah. than others, right? Okay. Some people are better than where others. Are you, where are you, by that, the way? Uh, not good, I would say. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Especially at, at this stage of my career. But, right. uh, no, honestly, because I, I remember the hyperextension and, and, uh, versus Atlanta, and I'm like, this dude is done. There's no way he's coming back. <laughs> I mean that thing looked nasty, and it was what two? He missed two games, I think. Yep. So, uh, you know, so I, I'm not. I, I can't rule anything for Giannis out, but I do remember warning people about the KD calf uh, when he went went ahead and played, and then all of a sudden popped his Achilles uh, on a move uh, out on the wing trying to drive. So this is what I'm saying. They they it depends on the depends on the player, but they're so weird because you feel okay for a while walking around. And then when you deliberately warm up, which means I know what I'm doing, I'm going to go dribble left and pull up for a jump shot. I know what I'm doing. Um, you know, that doesn't take as many, uh, uh, doesn't put such a strain on your muscles as a reactionary where I'm guarding somebody, or I want to make a quick change of direction that I wasn't anticipating. Uh, and that's what happened to KD. He suddenly wanted to drive. He tried to push off. Bam, gone. Uh, so that's that's the thing I'm worried about now. He could look okay, feel okay, but the minute he has to, and especially when he plays, you know, he plays hard. He's always on the floor, and he's euro stepping, going coast to coast. Uh, someone gets in his way, and he's got a quick change of direction. That's the stuff that I'm worried about for Giannis. And coming back too quickly, you gotta just 
<clears throat> you got to milk it as long as possible uh, if you're going to plan to do anything. But I mean, the Bucks got to first of all they got to get their game together first and foremost before you even worry about that. But uh, the honest injury is is well, but no uh, wait, I got to interrupt there. No, nothing else matters if if he can't play. I mean, the, the, the any any well, chance they matter, have, right? Well, they're not even they're not even going to be in it if they don't get their crap together. That's what that's all I'm saying. All right, okay. <laughs> but only going to matter is right because they're going to be out of it. So is he out a He's week? Is he out two weeks? Or you don't know? Or I? Uh, I I would keep him out at least two weeks. At That'd least. be minimum two weeks. Wow. That's what I'm starting at the two week level. Yes, you're not coming back before two weeks. Even if he feels you're okay, off. is what you were saying. I don't care. I don't care how you feel. Wow. You got to get that thing back up to where there's like, yeah, it's got to be back. To better than it was before. How do you know? Do you. they know from the treatments, or does he know? Uh, yeah, that's the thing. It's it's really hard to know. Are you back? I, I think the the main thing is you got to get your strength up. And I'm not a PT by any means, but I know that that thing lingers and it's not as strong as you think it is. Like I said, it's and it's only it's the stuff that you can't test for, right? It's a reactionary movement or. You're trying to jump, and someone's leaning on you, so you got extra weight uh, trying to push off. Normally, your body can handle that because there hasn't been any trauma to that area, right? So it's it's fully healed. That's why you got to get fully healed, 100, percent and that's just hard to do because you're always walking, and so you're always using that calf muscle. So if you want to go ahead and put him in a a boot and get him off of that calf for two weeks, which I don't think he's going to be uh, wanting to do that because he's going to feel He's gonna feel like okay, and I can go and shoot around and do that in like. But you have to tell him no, right? You have to tell him no. You have to. He has to understand the bigger picture. Bigger picture is like I don't care how you feel. Uh, you know, in four or five days, when you feel like okay, I can move around, I can shoot a jump shot, I can, whatever. But that that's you know five or six days. Like you're gonna feel like that. But that's not the real thing. That's not a game. You're not. You can't do play warm up. Uh, during the game, you got to go full throttle because right. that's his game, right? He's got to go full throttle. He's got to go 100, percent and that's going to take, like I say, minimum. I don't even think a couple weeks is enough, and it depends on the severity of it. But uh, when you watched it, it looked like, uh, eh, you know, he feels something, but uh, there's there's more going on in that camp than it always looks like. Wow! All right, now just, to the next question. Careful. Well, how yeah. much risk is there of him tearing his Achilles, as occurred with uh, Durant? And if, is it appropriate? You brought it up. Um, but and your boy uh, Aaron Rodgers, same thing. That calf was weak. That to the Achilles. Well, yeah, Rod, but but uh, Giannis has been weak before. I don't know when the last he had another calf thing, not that long ago. I thought he missed a game or two because of the calf. Right. So, yeah. I mean, no. It's, it's it's fragile, man. You can't. It's it's. I mean, it's it's just a fragile thing. It's it's too. It's a terrible injury to have to have to worry about. I mean, it's just terrible. You you'd rather have something else, something you know, I know. absolute that you know. About. This is a like one of those uncertain injuries. Like you oh, haven't know, helped me at all. The, this recover. is Tony Smith, the uh, basketball doctor. I didn't. I thought you'd make me feel better. You make me feel worse. Hey, you want the truth? You can't handle the I, truth. I, well, now I did want the truth. That's why I got to you. All right, so I don't know what you do. What do you? Do? All right, you're you're now Giannis, and you're Giannis, but you have the knowledge and experience of the doctor of basketball injuries, Tony Smith. So you're Giannis. What are you going to do? Yep. I'm going to say, uh, listen, guys, you guys got to win this first round playoff series without me. Whoa! Period. Go win it. I'm out for the first series. So that means he's That's out it. for and that, and then right. you'd be comfortable playing and not then being be, worried that I'm going to tear that you're going to tear your Achilles. Right. I think I think mentally because 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 I know how bad and how finicky they can be. I would I would say I'm giving them extra. I'm giving them double the time that I well, that I need. So that you're, the you're first round you guys can't. But again, like I said, like the Bucks, their other issues, they're not playing well. You got you guys got to do something. You guys got to show something here in this first round, uh, which I think without Giannis, it's going to help some other guys. But it's going to be Miami play. or Philadelphia, probably. So, okay, get it together. 
Uh, okay, so yeah, we get Gian, it. We Giannis can get it together. We can get it together hey, a lot better Giannis with you. Giannis goes out there and if he goes there and pops his Achilles, yeah, yeah. he's still going to be you're going to be in much worse situation. Correct. Yes. Yes. So, you, you, so that's what you don't, you can't have, well, and you got to guard against it. So unfortunately, you gotta, you gotta suck it up. Oh, well, fine, I sucked homework. it up. So at three or four weeks. Is that sucking it up enough that I can feel comfortable that he's not going to tear the Achilles? I don't think. I mean, how long is the series going? Let's say the series goes seven, right? I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. That if it goes seven, how long is that going to take? It's going to take a couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, you do, you yeah, just said teams, you just said he ain't playing he might, the first well, series. It depends. Well, uh, I would I would say the first series, but now now that I think about, it, don't they? They I think they stretch those games out now. They used to be. Yeah. Oh no, I'm I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna get back. But I mean that uh, the point is that however long it is, you think it's worthy of waiting. Yes, I, yeah. I, and I think however long people think it is, or even Giannis himself thinks it is, add another I week go or two. even extra on yeah. top of that. Right. Yes. Yeah, you've convinced me. He ain't playing the first what? series, according to my basketball doctor, Tony Smith. That's good. Right. When I when I feel great, I'm waiting another week. All right. To make sure I feel because they've said, you know, he's not going to play. He's not going to play till the start of the uh, playoffs. But that's that's not enough no, time. All right. Of course. No, that's not enough time. Because I mean, what is that? Ten days? No, or what is, whatever it is, it's yeah, not enough. Like how, how did you yeah, learn about yeah, now? Damian enough. Lillard had some comments about it, and he talked just like you about how terrible it is. You don't think it's terrible, but he's terrible. He did not address the the fear of the uh, Achilles tear. And so, when did you did Durant situation teach you more, or did you already know that before his situation? No, I I, I speak on I speak on the injuries uh, due to personal experience. I didn't, I didn't pop my Achilles, but I had a calf, and it went down to my Achilles, and I, I started my Achilles started to hurt, and I was like, "What is going on here?" I thought my calf was injured. My calf felt fine, but it really wasn't fine. And when I talked to one of my PTs, they're like, "Yeah, you know, your your calf is weak, so your body's going to adjust, and now it's going to put the pressure." You know, like the 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 calf muscle can't take the pressure, whatever pressure you put. Right, on, so it then right? goes so to the Achilles. It's going to transfer it down to the Achilles, and Achilles can't handle that pressure. It's not built for that pressure. Correct. So did you take extra take time off, or what? Well, how did yours play out? You had I so mean, many I was, injuries, I lost I mean, track. I, I, yeah, I wasn't. It wasn't when I was playing though. Oh. This is an old. When I'm an old man, this is after I'm an old man, and I was like, man, I thought I felt good. I was walking around fine, no pain. All of a sudden, I get out here and playing, and now I'm like. Achilles starts hurting, and then I'm like, talk to the PT, and they're like, yeah, you're putting pressure on your Achilles because your calf is not healed. I was like, my calf feels fine. They go, yeah, but it's not really healed. It might feel fine, but it's not healed. So, so you have to, what the people who say there's a fear of the Achilles have to take it seriously, and it's not worth the risk, given that as a possible uh, occurrence. Not worth the risk. Not worth the there's risk. There's a lot of shit. There's, there's, there's a lot. There's, there's a scar tissue in there. All right. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in there you got to get handled, but like I say, he's got the best medical people in the world. They they understand. They just got to convince him that he shouldn't play. It's not worth the risk until you know you've taken extra time just because of the nature of that injury. Like I said, Lillard knows, but you know maybe he doesn't know the the science behind it. I just I just know most of it because I asked. I was talking. So to my so PC even people. when he feels well, he can't play. But then how does no. he know when it's safe? You just give it a couple you're extra never weeks. Going to, you're never going to know. You just got to yeah. give it extra time. All right. When it feels fine and it feels okay, give it some extra time. Extra just time be, being a week or two. Be extra time being a week or two. And I think you, I mean, this this is the worst time. Right? Yeah. It feels, it was three weeks left in the season. All right, I'm shutting it down for the rest of the season. Correct. Okay, but they, you don't have that luxury now. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going with got a little bit of time before the playoffs yeah. start, and then I'm like – you know, I don't know what they. I don't know what they're gonna do. Hope, think, luckily, the games are spaced out more, so you can. No, I'm. I'm maybe doing. I'm going. I'm, there I'm going with. But, no, no, I'm going with Doctor yeah. Smith. You're out. The risk is too yep, great. You're out. Dame, carry us. They used to carry That's Portland. Right. There you go. Carry us. It's Let's Dame it. time. <laughs> it's Dame time. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and, Dame uh, time from and the start now. Chris Middleton, damn well, got to be healthy. 
Damn, Chris Middleton's got to be. Everybody's got to be all hands on deck right yep. now. Yeah, Giannis gets back. All right. Well, all right. Uh, we'll, I appreciate we'll it. I did not allow, allow you. To, you're all, you're still on assignment, but you did give us this. Very helpful. This could go national. You know this. Nobody has said this yeah, yet. You're it. the first person to say it. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I want to see when he gets back. He's got this uh, superhuman thing going. So, who knows? No. I'll this is the, no. This is be, what I would tell him. I would say, man. superhuman. You we got to realize this is bigger than superhuman. Superhuman can't whoop this. The risk is too great. He's not going to listen Way to me. Way too though. great. Way too great. All right. He's not going to listen to me either. So. All right. We'll st- we'll be back. You'll be uh, back next Thursday. Thanks. Yep. All right, brother. We'll take a break. The big guy, Jim McElvain, filling in for Dr. Tony Smith, who's on assignment. Nothing Mac can do is as big as this, is what just the doc just told us. Next. More of the Homer Hour coming up next on 94.5 ESPN. We do have some backups along southbound 41 as you're making your way down from Appleton Avenue all the way down to just past the Capitol Drive area, so be careful with that. Um, We've also got uh, southbound on uh, 43, backing up from before Hampton Avenue all the way down past Keith, and then back on the brakes all the way down through the Marquette Interchange. And then we've also got northbound on 41, just north of Highway 145 or the Richfield Interchange. We've got a vehicle fire and the right shoulder is blocked with this so that's going to be affecting your ride as well traffic is brought to you by the neil group they know how to minimize your taxes to keep more money in your pocket visit neilgroup.net that's n-e-a-l group.net and check out the tmj4 storm team forecast tonight scattered showers breezy with a low of 46 tomorrow's chance of showers early then decreasing clouds windy with a high of 56. Weather is brought to you by National Liquor Mart at 16th and National in Milwaukee packed with the best beer, liquor, seltzer and spirit deals in town. Open 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily where your satisfaction is their plan of action. From the WTMJ Traffic Center, I'm Debbie Lazagon, 94.5 ESPN. The best source for every piece of NFL news you need to know. I cannot imagine that there's any way that he missed the game because he's unhappy that the game was on turf. I, I think that, that that's preposterous to me. ESPN NFL insider Adam Schefter is on Jen, Gabe, and Chewy every Wednesday morning at 7.30. I think they look great. i got to be honest, I think that's what I kind of expected from the Packers. Presented by Orthopedic Associates of Wisconsin. There is a difference. Also sponsored by Construction Business Group and Island Resort and Casino. Go beyond your field of study and get a world-class education in leadership by joining the U.S. Army ROTC. Army ROTC programs transform students into confident leaders and provide a wide range of scholarships to help pursue life-defining careers. As an Army officer, you'll work side-by-side with peers who support your growth. Gain the experience and get the resources to open doors down the road. Army ROTC is open for enrollment. Visit GoArmy.com slash ROTC to learn more about available opportunities and scholarships, including at Mark. Cat University. The only thing that tops our selection is your savings discount liquor. Take me out to the ball game, roll out the barrel, and get up, get up, get out of here, gone. There's nothing like Milwaukee baseball. The Brew Crew is back, and we're here to help you turn your tailgate or game viewing experience into a grand slam. This is Marie from Discount Liquor, where since 1960, we have provided the best selection and the lowest prices. We stock literally thousands of varieties of beer, liquor, wine, and mixers. Over 15,000, actually. But who's counting? The point is, you want it, odds are we have it. Combine our incredible selection and everyday low prices with our two convenient locations, and you've got your one-stop shop for game day. Discount Liquor, in Milwaukee, on 51st in Oklahoma, only 10 minutes from Ampham Field and in downtown Waukesha on Barstow and Main. Discount liquor. You ever have one of those days when you just couldn't come up with the right answer? Well, I know one answer that pretty much solves all problems. Ice cream. Yeah, it's the answer to everything, right? And right now, at Quick Trip, our rich, creamy, straight-from-our-dairy, Nature's Touch, one-gallon pails of ice cream are just $4.99. Yeah, now that's an answer worth digging into. Come on, be a problem solver. Bring home some fresh, delicious Nature's Touch ice cream, only from Quick Trip. Uh, 
Brian, why are you stacking books on the floor? Uh, I want to stand while I work. Standing desks are all the rage these days. Well, it's a good thing that these desks move up and down. You did know that, right? What? They do? Yeah. We're not messing around here. This is great. Now, only if I had a chair to swivel around in. Do you just not pay attention to everybody else's desks? Well, no wonder I'm not getting much done these days. Coakley Brothers and Brothers Interiors, the official moving and furniture provider of GKB Milwaukee. This is the Homer Hour on 94.5 ESPN. Do you have a car, boat, ATV, or motorcycle taking up space? Consider donating it to Rawhide Youth Services. Co-founded in 1965 by Bart and Cherry Star, Rawhide is a faith-based nonprofit that helps thousands of youth every year, many right here in Milwaukee, overcome trauma, suicidal thoughts, and live better lives. They need vehicle donations. They've been doing this since the very start. People donate vehicles, and it makes a difference to support their mission. Visit rawhide.org slash donate and learn how you can help today. Jim McElvain will be coming up soon, but Gabe Neitzel's raising money for the Mac Fund, so he's in charge of the show. What do you want to say, Gabe? You got thousands last year. Now, well, you've done this. Give us the history of this whole thing. Yeah, well, so you're the reason I'm doing this whole thing because, you know, five or six years ago when I started. <laughs> yeah, because right. you said no. We were doing the show together. Mac Fund reached out to you. You said no. I but but Gabe would be interested. So the Mac Fund recruited me, and here we are, five or six years later. And um, so yeah, I've I've been able to raise a bunch of money. Last year we went up over sixteen thousand dollars because I said I'd run a half marathon if we got over thirteen thousand one hundred. Um, so I did that. Ran the half marathon uh, last October, the Milwaukee Lakefront Marathon. And this year, because Greg Matzik's gotten involved in the Ringer event, and for those who don't know, it's a 100-hole golf event that the Mac Fund puts on. There's about 20 of us. The Bog does a great job donating the course for the day. They shut it down so we can just fly around the golf course to get our 100 holes in. And they're, you know, uh, so we have to raise the money. We have to be able to generate the money. And, And in the handful of years that they've been doing this, I mean, we've been able to raise a bunch of money. As I mentioned, like individually, I raised $16,000 last year. There were, you know, 20 people, you know, playing in this event. So we were able to get well over um, $100,000 in donations last year. This has been a really big thing for the Mac Fund. But Greg Matzik over at WTMJ has played the last couple of years. So we decided to team up this year and tried to, uh, you know, really put a push out there for our fundraising efforts. And because of that, we were able to partner with our friends over at Scream and Sicilian. So right now, if you text CARES, C-A-R-E, to 800 3776 And if you make a donation of $25, you will get an entry to win pizza for a year. If you make a $50 donation, you'll get three entries into pizza for a year, which is 24 uh, coupons, courtesy of our friends at Palermo's Pizza, plus a pizza oven and a lot of other screaming Sicilian swag that retails for over $375. So some cool things going on. Um, Homer, you got into the fun that we did yesterday over on KBN. Yep. Um, so I want to talk about that a little bit because you said you would donate a thousand dollars if Ben Bruss took the Aaron Rodgers Jets jersey that mm-hmm. he had Matt LaFleur sign next year or last year, send it to LaFleur with an apology note. And yep. you have to approve the apology note, right? Yeah, we already had a discussion. He set one that it said, "Well, I'm doing this because I don't." Somebody said, "I I I have to do it for him to donate a thousand bucks." Said we can't have that as a part of it. He doesn't. You you can't tell him you're just being being bought and sold. <laughs> so he said that he wants to do something about an arena jersey. I said, "Fine, whatever. Right, rewrite it, but it's got to be based on I feel bad. This was wrong. I should have known it was wrong. You were nice enough to sign it." but I'm giving you the jersey back. You can do whatever you want with it, and maybe we'll figure out a way for a better jersey next year. That's what the Ben said. He would rewrite the letter, and and I'm fine with that. That's uh, I think that's that's a, that oh, was, so that's like, the deal. Because because Lafleur played in the Arena League, didn't he? So Correct. Now he's going to try to try track now in a Matt Lafleur Arena yeah, League jersey, something like that. But I said, yeah, that's fine. Just don't put in there. I don't really believe this, but a guy gave a thousand bucks to the back fund, <laughs> so I'm making this crap up. No, you can't. I should send you a copy of the letter that he wrote me, but that was kind of the start of it. Well, no, you. Um, he has to write the letter, so no, I think he'll be fine. It's just that they want to. I think, and it's a good idea too to to uh, add to another jersey that would 
be better, which would also be uh, an indication of an apology. But I want to go back to the beginning. You're a part of this. This event didn't exist until you started with it, right? That first year. They've had the Mac Fun Golf um, Tournament, but... Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think this is the fifth or sixth year. And this event alone, Homer, now in the... The I amount of money is, is incredible. I, yeah. I mean, they've raised... I mean, the Mac Fund's raised with this event. This event alone, since it started six or seven years over ago... Half million, over half a million, I'll million say. Now. Over a million. Yeah. Yeah, wow. a million dollars. Yeah. In the six or seven years. it's It's been unbelievable the way that they've been able to really, again, just drive interest with people like this. And, and, and again, they've, they've got a lot of people that, you know, know a lot of big time people or whatever that can get, you know, money rolling, but some people will donate, you know, per birdie. And, you know, they, they just get a lot of really good partners involved. The, the Mac fund is just such a great organization that for those who don't know, was started, you know, 50 years ago by uh, Eddie Doucette and John McLaughlin after Eddie Doucette's kid was diagnosed with, uh, with a form of pediatric cancer. And, you know, that was something that obviously touched the two of them and has just continued to grow and grow. And they've, they, they're now doing this because again, and in Mac fun, Midwest athletes against childhood cancer, they're, they're trying to branch out. They're having one of these events in Chicago, one out in Cleveland. I think they want to do one in St. Louis. Don't know if that one's started yet, but they want to branch this out because they've right. had so, so much success with this one. All right. I have another idea. Okay. I'm willing to donate an additional $500. If Ben Brust agrees in writing that he will allow his wife to wear as much Marquette she she wants to wear when Marquette and Wisconsin play, and I, I feel like and okay. all cho- all children. Okay, the children. Okay, this is this is what I'm interested in because the children part is going to be the interesting part of that. I think. I mean, having his wife, yeah, excuse me, having his girlfriend wear, you know, wh- whatever she wants to wear on Marquette. He hasn't let her wear Marquette. Days. I don't think. Not for Marquette, Wisconsin. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a big point of contention this past year. I think the year before that as well. The kid part's going to be interesting. The kid part. I think he would have agreed easily to the other one. I, I'm I'm curious to see if. If yeah, I'll allowed, even the wave the yeah. wife part. He can set up what, or not wife, girlfriend, whatever, whatever, yeah. Randy, he runs. This is for children. Children. He will have no wow. say in what the children wear Marquette, Wisconsin game day. We'll see I, how I he handles that. I, I think, I hope Benny, yeah, I hope Benny j- jumps in and I hope he's hearing this. If not, I'm definitely going to text him. But, uh, I, I mean, that seems fair. And he right? can't ban the child from going to the game. He can't say, sure, they can wear Marquette, but they're locked in the house. They have to be allowed <laughs> to be public. Sure. Because I would say, I think, uh, that makes sense. I think it's very possible that their child could end up at the Marquette-Wisconsin game next year. In Marquette oh, yeah. gear. Oh, Yeah. I mean, certainly if, if his girlfriend has anything to say. And about I it. will say this. Uh, I'll do $500 for one year. So, if, okay. But I bet he can't wait till the child's 36. Like, the, <laughs> for their child at so the game. So you're saying the first Yeah, the this, first year, game this year would be an example. Kid. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Uh, they come as a family to Marquette, Wisconsin with their child. Um, and that child is has to be in full Marquette. Gear, then the five and five hundred bucks. Now this one, I do want to let you know, I'm not paying it till he does it. That's fair. I think okay. that's fair. The other because, one, I mean, again, the you, other one, uh, I'm in for the thousand now. The five hundred, you will get it when I see the picture, because he'll okay. finagle I, I this any way possible. Fair. I think that's fair. Um, my question for you is, uh, what you got the tie on that only means one thing, Homer, (laughs) as you know, what does it mean? (laughs) You've got an auction tonight. What's the, what, what, uh, what charity are you supporting tonight? Uh, feeding America. They're doing one at uh, Fiserv and they asked me to do it. And so, uh, yeah, I'll be there. You're, you, you know me better than anybody else. (laughs) Nobody else. What is going on? Do you lose a bet? No. No, no. Um, if Homer's so wearing no. the tie, if Homer's wearing the suit, you know, it's one thing and one thing only. It does, I'm not doing and a game. I don't understand why radio people feel a suit and tie is, a coat and tie is necessary. But maybe when you were courtside for every game. But nobody else wears, not everybody else wears a coat and tie. But again, let's get back to this. So how many uh, how many uh, birdies do you have a year? What's the... 
Oh, uh, so last year was the most I had. I had 13 or 14 last year. Right. I, I've averaged right around 10. Right, you just kill right the par. You just year. kill the par fives. Number one, you have to birdie yeah. at least uh, oh, five, five, t- I mean, five so, times. No, five times 18, 90. You I, only play it five times. I would say three yeah. to four birdies on number one. 18 yeah, I, I the ball. Yes, that is that, that's the that's the hole I've birdied the most. Is nine one, might nine could be tough. I made tough. an eagle out there one year. Nine Nine's could be tough. tough. Nine is tough. Uh, I, would I saw think Greg Matzik though hole one out. It was for, I, I think it was for par, but he he holed out from like 140 yards there last year. I think it was for par on number nine. Nine can be tough, but um, and the seven, other par seventeen on the, the back, other par five seventeen. If you hit a good drive, you probably birdie that a yeah. few times. Yeah, 17, and the drive. other one, um, yeah, it's 13 or 14 right after the par three where it's down the hill, back up the hill. Um, I'm, I, I've been able to make some, a few birdies Yes, there. you could, get, yeah, on, you could get on that green there. close to two in two if you if you, uh, if you hit it. If you're I normal, hit a good drive, yep. to, Yeah. All right. So how could people, because I know that I've gone to the website and that people put the numbers down and and uh, – so what, what? How can people? You yeah. mentioned you mentioned uh, text cares to one eight hundred nine nine zero thirty seven seventy six. But I know you go to uh, um, I don't know if it's a Mac fund yet, and then they have a list, and then you can punch your name or Greg's name, and then you you make a donation to your yep. team, right? Yeah. If you want to just yeah, if you want to just go to the Mac fund page, you can do that. If you want to go to my Twitter page, it has a link pinned right to the top of it to uh, to me and Greg's page. I do want to say thank you uh, because of everything that happened yesterday and, and then a couple of donations that came in today as well. Um, we've reached our $5,000 match um, from my friend at Paintings from Pediatrics. Uh, my friend Craig Sorbo uh, is the founder and president of Paintings for Pediatrics, which is another charity uh, that he started uh, right around the pandemic where families um, who are going through or have gone through pediatric cancer, either the kids or the families themselves, uh, paint pictures and then they auction off those pictures. Um, so it's it's a great charity. They've done a lot of great things uh, over the last couple of years. And, and the last two years, they've helped uh, me out with my fundraising with the MAC Fund because what they do is they want to have uh, 30% of what they do go to or towards research, what the MAC Fund is. And the MAC Fund is 100%. All their money goes towards research because only 4% of federal funding uh, for cancer goes to pediatric cancer. And then 70% of their money goes towards helping families because obviously there's always um, a, a very hard financial part of when a kid gets diagnosed with pediatric cancer. So paintings for pediatrics has stepped up once again this year. I need to enter that there. And we're going to be up over $15,000 raised, me and Greg, uh, so far with still two weeks left uh, before the event next week. So you can still, you know, you can still donate, still have that opportunity to win pizza for a year. We'll have three different winners win that pizza for a year, courtesy of our friends. At and the Street best Celia deal is if you do 50, because then you get three entries. Then you get three entries into the drawing yes. for the pizza for a year. And actually, I would be eligible for that, unlike the other awards, right? This is not associated with the station, so I can actually win, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. Yes, you could win that, yes. That All right, any hole in one, last question, any hole in ones in the history of the uh, ringer? I don't think so. I, I wow, this guy, um, there'll be one coming I, this year. Yeah, I would think. I mean, there are some good players that uh, participate in this thing too. So, uh, but I don't think. Yeah, I don't. I don't recall any hole in ones ever happening um, in the history of this event. I'll go with number eleven. Someone will get a hole in one uh, at on uh, number eleven. That'll be my prediction. I actually got close there last year. I stuffed one. Yeah. Uh, one of the last holes we played, I stuffed one there within a foot. All right, appreciate it. Congratulations for all you do. Uh, I'm glad uh, that I said <laughs> I'm too old. Gabe, you go play a hundred holes. <laughs> so it's it's worked out well, great. I, I, Mm-hmm. Go ahead. It's worked out great for everybody. So I appreciate you, Homer. I appreciate you volunteering or, you know, throwing my name towards the Mac fund because it's been a fun event. And as you know, uh, with all the different people over the years that, that have been associated with the Mac fund, whether that's been John Kerry, who used to be with the Mac fund, whether that's Dr. Dave Margolis, who obviously does a lot of things with children's and is associated with the Mac fund as well. Um, a lot of great people uh, yep. that are associated with it. Mike Belowski's done a great job. Becky Pinter over there at the Mac fund. So it's a, it's a great cause. Uh, so if you can donate again, CARES, C-A-R-E-S to 800-990-3776. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks, Homer. Coming up, the Renaissance man, seven whatever. I think he's legitimately, I'm not, I think he's seven one. We'll find Jim McElvey next. The Homer Hour is back after this on 94.5 ESPN. Traffic. We got 
got some heavy backups on southbound 43, basically from about Locust all the way down through the Marquette and over the High Rise Bridge. Northbound is slow from the Marquette all the way up to Keefe. Westbound on 94, slowing out of the Marquette all the way to about Holly Roads. Kind of a hefty ride there. And of course, it's going to be heavy on westbound 894 through the construction zone, stretching all the way up from Grange and around the Mitchell Interchange all the way to 68th Street. Traffic is brought to you by Fifth Third Bank, custom solutions built around your goals. Member FDIC. And checking the TMJ4 Storm Team forecast tonight, scattered showers, breezy, a low of 46. Tomorrow, slight chance for showers early, then decreasing clouds, windy with a high of 56. From the WTMJ Traffic Center, I'm Debbie Lazaga, 94.5 ESPN. They say seeing is believing. And when you see what's inside at American Place Casino, you better believe you're gonna love it. Because when it comes to amazing gaming, we're a real game changer. With the most exciting of table games like blackjack, crafts, and roulette, the newest slots, a sports book, restaurants, bars, and more. So if you're ready for excitement, we'll see you soon. American Place Casino, change the game. Must be 21 years of age or older. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, crisis counseling and referral services can be accessed by calling 1-800-GAMBLER, 1-800-426-2537. Hi, it's John Reitz from Great Midwest Bank. And as a community bank, we sincerely appreciate our customer loyalty. Over nearly 90 years, we've done all we can to return the favor. Great Midwest Bank offers flexible solutions that bigger banks and credit unions simply can't because our entire team is right here in the community. We love helping our neighbors when we're at work and then catching up over the weekend. Visit us at greatmidwestbank.com. Great Midwest Bank, your simply local equal housing lender. Nelnet Incorporated, the nation's largest, most respected student loan servicer, has document imaging technology from James Imaging Systems. Facilities Coordinator, Sunday Heidemann. James Imaging has been a local provider for us for many years. They are reliable, they're responsible, and they take care of all of our printer needs. Just what you'd expect from a 100% Wisconsin-owned and managed business technology company. I think we get a great value with James Imaging with their service and the contracts that we have with them that our cost stays low and we get the most for our money. Sunday, what's the benefit for you with James Imaging Systems? It makes my job more enjoyable that I can count on these people to do what they're trained to do, and I have no worries because I know I'm going to be taken care of. James Imaging Systems. Call 262-781-7700. James Imaging Systems, your local business technology partner. Hey, it's Gabe Nigel from Jen, Gabe, and Chew. You've heard me talk about the results Mentality has had on my life, but don't just take it from me. Jason has had success, too, thanks to Mentality. My only regret is I didn't do it sooner. Uh, knowing, once again, I've gotten the treatments done uh, and continuing, uh, it's... Uh, I do feel, you know, it, stuff does hurt a little bit more, but I'm 40, you know, in my 40s, and that's going to happen. But again, the energy levels, uh, it is uh, above and beyond. Again, it's uh, I'm back in that age where I'm like, this is amazing. Get started today at LowTUSA.com. Hey, it's Kyle Walls for Universal Windows Direct. I've been telling you that windows from Universal perform better and last longer. Call today at 414-410-2000 to schedule your free in-home estimate today. And for every two windows you buy, you get the next two free. Plus a free upgrade to triple pane glass and they'll double your energy tax credit. Restrictions do apply. Tell them I told you to call and get an additional 250 off your next project. For the last windows you'll ever need, go to UniversalWindowsDirect.com. And like me, you'll be saying... I love my windows. You're listening to the Homer Hour on 94.5 ESPN. Higher Love Cannabis Company. Higher Love. What do you need to know? You need to know it's less than an hour from Green Bay. Higher Love. Less than an hour from Green Bay. I would just repeat that 15 times, but I think they want to know, want you to know more. Seven stores located across the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, located just over the border, Menominee, Norway, and Ironwood. The only UP cultivator offering organic, clean, green, certified products. You can count on them to provide uh, the good stuff and none of the bad stuff. And their grand opening brick and mortar store in Menominee, that's done. But know this. Did I tell you? Higher love, less than an hour from Green Bay. Higher love, less than an hour from Green Bay. I got to drive it. I'm guessing 50 minutes. Higher love. What a treat. Tony Smith is on assignment. He did give us the information on the calf injury. Means time to talk with the Renaissance man himself, Jim McElvain. Matt, good evening. How you doing, Homer? 
I'm doing fine. There are a number of reasons I wanted to talk to you. First of all, uh, I looked up in Wikipedia to see exactly how tall you are listed at 7'1". Uh, have you always been listed at 7'1", or did you ever get to 7'2"? No, I think I came into my 7 feet and put an inch on while I was there. Um, uh, your, 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 uh, vo- the sound seems a little odd. Pebble Shoe, should we All continue? Right. Oh, there we go. Let's take a tour of Max House. Yeah, looks I'll, good. I'll move, I'll move closer to Star Lake. All right. I don't know what that means, but is that your... You look good. I'm, I'm so far out in the sticks in Florida that the only internet service we have here is Starlink. Uh, nice. You picked you picked a place, small little town. You don't have to mention the time going to, but you wanted to be reasonably close to Orlando so your kids could go to Disney World. Is that accurate? Yeah, we're less than an hour from Disney World. And actually, my best friend from high school, Tony Garbo, and his wife, Brenda, are, are vacationing in the villages. So I got to go hang out with them and watch the final four with them last weekend. And uh, we're, we're kind of right in between the villages and Disney World. This is outstanding, the sound right now. Um, do you ever believe that you were 7'2"? Uh, and when, at what age, did you officially become a 7-footer? I don't think I was ever 7'2". I think I became a 7-footer in high school, oh. uh, junior or senior year probably. Didn't everybody want to measure you? I would have fired gone to school with you. Come on, Mac. Let's see. I'm going to find out. Are you officially seven feet tall? I mean, people asked you all the time when we were at the, huh, how tall are you? Yeah. Give them your answer. People, people generally don't have the means or resources to measure you on the spot. Coach Letch had you know, just stand up against the wall. These are what the heights are. And, and my height never fluctuated. I'll tell you, I look at some of these guys on the draft boards and the heights and the weights, and once they get done with the combine, I think a lot of guys are going to shrink and a lot of guys are going to lose some weight. I, I don't think Klingon is anywhere near 280 pounds. All right. But do you think – I didn't look, look to see what they list him at and uh, what Edie. They list him at 280, and they list Edie at like 300. And I believe Edie's 300. He's 7'4", but – so you think he is seven four? He is three inches taller than you. Yeah, I think so. All right, and the tallest maybe guy drink an inch or two, but he's pretty tall. Now the tallest guy for you ever was Murasan, right, or Manute Bowl? I don't right. know. No, uh, Murasan was seven seven. Manute and Sean Bradley were seven six, and Rick Smith was seven four, and Sabonis was probably seven two. I mean, what's it like for the first time in your life you experience something that we do all the time, looking at someone who's six inches taller than you? Explain Homer, that. I wasn't always seven feet tall. Well, well, no, I have from... life experience where people were two no, feet taller than me. That was when you were <laughs> 17. All right. That's like 40 years ago. I don't know how old you are. You got to have an anyway. So, I mean, like, not when you're nine. I mean, you're an adult, and you look across, and Murasan is six inches taller than you. What was that like? It, it made me feel normal and, oh. and nice. And, and Gwendolyn makes me feel the same way because she's six seven, and it makes me feel normal. Here's Kent. Say hi, Kent. Hi, Kent. How old is Kent now? Nice hair. He's seven. Yeah, he doesn't get it cut too often. And I had heard that he's six nine at age seven. Is that accurate or not? No, he's not. Blythe Darby is nine, and I think she's maybe five four or so. You know, everybody right is expecting them. I would say the expectations would be based on the parents. And Gwendolyn is a legit six seven, correct? correct. Not made up. Uh, I would expect. Your daughter to be six, at least six five, and your son to be at least six eight. Is that accurate from anything the doctors have told you? I we don't really ask the doctors about it. I think we have more experience in it than they do. Correct. And do you agree with me men, or not? Yeah, all the men in our family, at a minimum, on both sides are generally six eight. All right. And then and the women are over six feet, so. You know, 6'3 at a minimum, but probably 6'5 or more. All right. Now, for those who don't know, McIlvain is my seven-foot NBA draft expert. 
because uh, Odin, Greg Odin, was available, and Max said, not only don't take him in the first pick, don't draft him at all. His body will not survive in the NBA. At the same time, you mentioned that white guy who played at Pitt who was horrible. Uh, I've forgotten his name now. He's still in the league. And you said he'll play 10 years in the league because he has the great body for it. His brothers and sisters were Olympians. Who's I've forgotten that guy's name. Do you remember him? He uh, was it? Who? Zine, Zahn, Steve, something or other. All right, I'll look it up. But anyway, back to Odin. Tell everybody what it like. You're a, you're my also my medical expert on seven footers because you said when the feet go bad, you're done, right? Yeah. And he had yeah, bad he, feet or something. Type, his body type just didn't look good. He had the nagging injury, but but the way he, he walked and carried himself, I don't know if he was knock kneed, but it just didn't look like his body was going to hold up to the rigors of the game. And that's just what happens. All right. And then also your assessment of how good they'll be. I think that I believe most say Zach Eady will not be a first round pick. He might be an early second round pick, even though he's as tall as he is. Your seven foot assessment of his skills in the NBA today. I, I think we saw in the second half of the UConn game, he had some trouble defensively with pick and rolls out on the perimeter and, and guys rolling to the basket and his ability to be mobile in those situations. But um, Eldridge or Kasner brings up a good point. He could be the next Yao Ming. And just a handful for people to deal with down low, although he did a really good job of bodying him up and being physical with him. And I don't know what his percent, his shot percentage was when Klingon was guarding him, but I know he missed a lot of shots, a lot more than I wait, saw him. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Mac. I can't really get away with this. There is no chance he's Yao Ming. None. Zero. Uh, you know what? He wasn't even a starter at, at IMG or wherever that was that he went in high school. All right. You know, it takes big guys longer to develop. Um, yeah, well, he might be as good as Yao Ming when they're both 40. I don't know. Come on. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, that was Eldridge Kasner who who brought that point up. I, you know, I look at him and, and see him having struggles yeah. defensively in the NBA. I pull him out on the floor, put him in pick and rolls, and, and get a six eleven guy out there. That can I would think Klingon will be a better pro than Zach Eady. What do you think of that belief? Yeah, I mean, he's got three point range. Apparently, doesn't show it very often, but um, I think there's more upside to his game probably at this point. And I think we're, we're seeing more of what Zach Eadie's capable of in totality right now. Yeah, he was impressive. He had an incredible. All right, Steven Adams is the guy's name. Steven uh, Adams, right. Remember him when he played? He was horrible as a freshman. Yeah, he I don't, wasn't good. I don't think he can make a layup. And you looked at it and said, guy's going to play 10 years in the NBA. What a body. And you nailed yeah. that one, so. All right, do you have uh, we're going to we're going to take a break and then we're going to get to calf injuries. Are you uh I know you're the expert on foot injuries. Do you have any calf injury experience like uh Tony Smith who says it's just really bad? I ruptured my left calf and partially tore my left Achilles. That's what ended my career. Whoa! I guess I should have known that. More next. More of the Homer Hour coming up next on 945 ESPN. Football guy. Good morning, Tausch. How are you? Football guy. Uh, old T's a little, I'm not feeling 100%. I'm gonna, tell me what, coming at it from different views. Uh-oh. No, just oh, I think way, with all that little stuff that's going Dallas. around and you had the long trip back from the loo. Uh, I'm going to grind. Wilde and Tausch, presented by Palo Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Also sponsored by Coors Light. Weekdays 9 to noon on 94.5 ESPN. And available wherever you get your podcasts with Wisconsin On Demand. True Chicago-style pizza is thin, crispy, and cut into squares. And thanks to Connie's Frozen Pizza, you can enjoy a true slice of the city. You'll enjoy it so much you won't even mind where it comes from. Connie's Frozen Pizzas are made from the same cornmeal crust Connie's has been serving for over 60 years. They're perfectly cheesy, perfectly saucy, and they're exactly what you crave. Get to know the true Chicago style with Connie's Frozen Pizza. Born in Chicago, loved by cheeseheads. Available in a freezer aisle near you. Is this house a good price compared to others in the area? Are prices going up or down? If I don't make an offer right this very moment, will I miss my chance? These are just some of the questions a home buyer might ask. And these are the sorts of questions an agent who is a Realtor can help answer. 
Because Realtors have the expertise, data, and access to specialty training to help you navigate the process of buying a home. They provide support, guidance, and have your back every step of the way. That's what Realtors do, because that's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. Hey, I got a question for you. You hate bending over to put on your shoes, wish you could just put them on standing or sitting without ever having to touch them? If so, then I have the shoe for you. Introducing new hands-free Skechers Slip-Ins. With new Skechers Slip-Ins, you just step in and off you go. You don't even need to lace up. So how do Skechers Slip-Ins work? Well, there's a special smooth comfort pillow in the heel that helps your foot slide right into place. So just step in them and go. Find new hands-free Skechers Slip-Ins for the whole family at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. Discover the difference at findhigherlove.com slash CBD. Higher Love Cannabis Company is the only cultivator in the UP offering organic, clean, green certified products. That means quality you can trust every time. With seven locations across the UP, including Menominee, Norway, and Ironwood, finding your higher love is easier than ever before. And for our friends in Green Bay, higher love is less than an hour away. Kindness starts with you. Experience higher love today. Visit findhigherlove.com slash CBD and follow them on social media at findhigherlove. Uh, Brian, why are you stacking books on the floor? Uh, I want to stand while I work. Standing desks are all the rage these days. Well, it's a good thing that these desks move up and down. You did know that, right? What? They do? Yeah. We're not messing around here. This is great. Now, only if I had a chair to swivel around in. Do you just not pay attention to everybody else's desks? Well, no wonder I'm not getting much done these days. Coakley Brothers and Brothers Interiors, the official moving and furniture provider of GKB Milwaukee. Hey, Drew Scott here, and I'm Jonathan Scott, reminding you that life's better with a home policy from American Family Insurance. They can help you get just the right protection at just the right price and help you save when you bundle home and auto. Kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It'll be just right for you. We love a custom build. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully. Dream fearlessly. Get a quote and find an agent at AmFam.com. Products not available in every state. Visit AmFam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Eagle Sports Range has an unbeatable offer on concealed carry license classes. For just $49, enroll in their three-hour class led by expert instructors prioritizing safety. Learn why techniques, and mindset for responsible carrying. Stick around for an optional hour of range time with instructors included in the package. Practice under professional guidance and gain confidence. Open 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day at 2525 East Lake Avenue in Cudahy. Secure your spot at EagleSportsRange.com. Eagle Sports Range, where safety meets skill. Welcome back to the Homer Hour on 94.5 ESPN. The Renaissance man himself, Jim McElvain. I want to give you a chance to talk about Marquette and Shaka Smart. I assume all former Marquette players love where the program is at right now. I, I have to believe they do, especially when you look around the landscape of college basketball and there's there's kids who are active on rosters because um, charges are pending or the trials haven't taken place yet. And really sketchy situation. And Marquette seems to operate in a different place. And and I think a lot of Marquette alums are really happy about that. I was talking with Lance Allen about that the other day. I just said, I'm I'm thankful that that we have such good representatives in terms of our coaches and our players, the way they carry themselves, the way they present the program and and the school to the rest of the country. All right. uh, After talking with Tony Smith, he says that Giannis should sit out the entire Bucks first round series because of the calf injury. You want to agree or disagree, or clearly you know how bad it can be. Is it a strain? It must be, right? I don't. I don't. I don't know the specifics. It's just anything that you have. What's the risk that your Achilles could be next? Or tell us your story. Well, for me, I didn't didn't realize until after the fact. Um, on um, antibiotic, I think that weakened your ligaments and and, te- and, and they they made the connect to it after the fact. But um, I was just running down the and my calf and Achilles snapped and popped on the back of the leg with a, a wet towel. And it didn't hurt a lot, but um, I, I think Matthews and Dominique Wilkins are the only guys off the top of my head that have come back from Achilles injuries and played with a pretty good level of success and calves aren't much 
far, further from that if you're rupturing them. Um, strains, you know, Aaron Rodgers dealt with that to aggravate. You just got to give it time to heal and you'll get around it. But How much um, time, to, Doc? That's the question. It, it, I guess it depends on the severity. And, <laughs> and I guess, you know, it, it's got to be something that Giannis has, has got to take it on a, on a day by day. But don't basis. you have to be extra, extra, extra. I don't want to see careful that whatever you think you should do, you maybe give it even more time because we see those, they had to think they were okay. And clearly the risk was greater than they thought. Yeah. I was, I was in my late twenties and it felt like about 18 months before I really got comfortable with my calf and Achilles after I ruptured it. And I was retired at that point, but it still took me about 18 months to really feel confident in it. And even now I notice I've got like bumps on my Achilles that I never noticed before. And, and I think I might've had a, a partial tear on my right calf when I was doing these reverse sled pull things. And, and it just, you know, you, your body starts to break down when you put a lot of miles on it. And Giannis is, is putting all kinds of miles on his body. So what would you what would you tell Giannis with your experience? Because everybody says he's going to want to play before they should really let him play because he feels better, and that is one of the biggest things to deal with, said Tony. I, yeah, and, and I did the same thing as a rookie. I had a, a foot and ankle injury. I came down on Manute Bull's foot in a pickup game before training camp started, and I was, I was rushing to get back. I wanted to play. And I tried to come back and tweaked it just in warm-ups before a game. And it set me back a week, but it, would, it turned out to be the week that I needed. And it covered a lot more thoroughly in that extra week. Um, and, and I think, you know, what you have to do if you're Giannis is, is consider, you know, if, if it goes sideways on you, you've got the whole summer to recover, but you, you want to try to save it. And, and like we, we saved Nate McMillan in Seattle. We hardly played him at all during the regular season because he was – older and broken down and, and had some minutes left to give us, but we didn't want to take them before we really needed them. So I, I would wait until I get to the playoffs and then give it a really hard look there. So you, without knowing too much to you, it would be reasonable to say you're not playing the first series that would give him uh, maybe three, four weeks. I just think the risk is way greater than I imagined. You can't, you can't afford to be wrong, right? Uh, He's young, Homer. He, you know, he could recover from a more catastrophic injury, probably. Technology is getting better, but who knows? All right, here's the Discount Liquor Twitter poll question. Tony Smith says Giannis should sit out the Bucks' first-round playoff series because of his calf injury. Agree or disagree? Renaissance man Jim McElvain, how do you vote? I would, I would say don't sit out the first round. Especially if they need you. you know? they're no, they're going to need him. They're going to need him. Yeah. You're willing if to take that him, risk. Yeah, maybe maybe not the first game, but, you know, I would take it a game-by-game game basis. But if you lose the first one, then you got to look at the front of the second. All right. Jim McElvain in some small little town where I'll bet their horse is around. Am I right? There's a couple. Yeah, there are a couple. What is it? Thanal- Thanalysis? Is that what they call it? Thanalysis, coming up next. Yeah, Giannis's brother, but it is also Thanalysis. Thanks, Renaissance man, Tony Smith. Thanalysis, next. Thank you. Traffic. Backups continue on southbound 43, starting from North Avenue down through the Marquette. Northbound's going to be slow from Fond Lac.